Right now on VFN TV, the persecution of Christians across the globe is greater than it's ever been at any time in history. We're going to talk about that, those numbers, and even genocide is taking place right now on VFN TV. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Persecution of Christians is so high that we're almost at genocide levels. Mm. That's actually the removal of a people off the face of the earth. It's happening in the European countries. It's happening in the Middle East. It's happening through uh, the world right now. Sri Lanka, we just had the major explosion where, you know, at the Easter celebration where all these churches were together and killed almost 250 people and wounded many, many others. I'm Greg Lancaster. Of course, he's joining me is... Uh, John Ramos, and these levels of persecution is so major, isn't it, John? It's a major thing that's happening right now, and we really need, as Christians, be watchful and prayerful about what's occurring, because we're talking about, particularly in the Middle East, mass extermination. In 2003, there was a reportedly 1.5 million Christians in Iraq. Today, those numbers are 120,000 believers are left less. That's about 10% of the Christian population. And that comes after ISIS and uh, the, where they were putting the in letter over doors for Naz Nazarene. Nazarene, and they were taking people's property. They were crucifying uh, Christians. They were crucifying Muslims who weren't Muslim enough. And they were building this uh, caliphate in that area. And, you know, thanks to President Trump, understand when he sent the troops in there and just dealt with it in a few months and ended it, he ended the uh, uh, major genocide of Christians taking place in that particular area, at least at that moment, if you yeah. wouldn't have stopped that. And the it previous- completely wiped out. Well, you think about the previous administration, they were doing everything to fuel that. That's right. It was just, everything That's right. that was going on was like, at what point are you not gonna be empathetic towards the death of human beings who happen to be Christians or, or I think there were, uh, um, you know, Mount Sinjar, there were, yeah. uh, there was ZDC. It was unfa uh -huh. unfathomable what was happening yeah. when the United States has so much power and leverage and yeah. strength that we've helped people for many years. When you have Christians that were being chased up a mountain and their, their people were fleeing and they testified in Congress to this and yet very little was done in the previous administration. I'm grateful for this president, President Trump and what he's doing now but this is, this is really concerning. This is what the BBC reports. It says mm -hmm. the persecution of Christians in parts of the world is at near genocide levels, according to a report ordered by Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt. The review led by the Bishop of Truro, uh, Philip Munstephen, estimated that one in three people suffer from religious persecution. One in three. One in three. Think about one that. One in three. Yeah, that alone should help Christians realize, you know, that we need to to pay attention yeah. that that whoever is in leadership can change that situation it matters who the king is it yeah. matter who's a who your president or prime minister is but in particular this mm -hmm. is what this report found out okay christians were the most persecuted religious group think about that and we've yeah. learned on a previous program where we where glenn beck shared that out of the what was it 1800 uh persecutions that were occurring in europe 1300 of the 1800 or against Christians, Christians. That's it. and that was in Europe. So you see this happening in Europe, you see it happening in the Middle East, and this is a physical extermination. They barely mention, it's like red, It's like media yeah. silence when it yeah. comes time to a Christian or a Jew being persecuted on the earth, but all of a sudden if one situation happens, you know, about a hijab or something like that, this hits the news and it's like, somebody just lost their life. Yeah. You know, somebody was just killed, somebody was just, you know, blown up in their church because they were just happened to be Christian. For a belief. Yeah, for a belief. In God. Not yeah. not not because they committed a crime. Right. Not because they murdered or raped or stole something. Right. But because they believed in God. This is getting actually a lot of attention. And we even have the the Prince of Wales. Yeah. Uh, having really sharing some some heartfelt concern about what is happening to Christians. In fact, take a look. It is a an indescribable tragedy that Christianity is now under such threat in the Middle East, an area where Christians have lived for 2,000 years and across which Islam spread in 700 AD, with people of different faiths living together peaceably for centuries. It seems to me that our future as a free society 
both here in Britain and throughout the world, depends on recognizing the crucial role played by people of faith. And of course, religious faith is all the more convincing to those outside the faith when it is expressed with humility and compassion, giving space to others, whatever their beliefs. So you're looking at Prince Charles, obviously, yeah. and he's sharing the, about the persecution, the history of Great Britain, when you think about that they've seen so many different things mm. you know, take place, and uh, it's just amazing what's taking place in the world right now. And, you know, part of the last days that would take place is there'd be great persecution against you know, the Jews and Christians on the face of the earth, and these things happen over times in history. People say, well, this is the last days. Well, it wasn't because we're still here which means we could do something about this level of persecution that's taking place. It's about being strong. It's about having a strong defense, being so, your military is so strong that nobody wants to fight against the military, thinks they can take it. And right now, things are shifting in the world. Things are, are uh, I mean, you have, we have a fleet in America going to the Middle East as we speak right now because of Iran and what they're threatening, Hamas, what they're threatening about potential attacks on America American people, they're different places, uh, against Christians, against Israel. I mean, the world's kind of in, you know. In flux, In flux it? is the word I want yeah, to say. Yeah, flux, flux right now. And it's interesting that, that this is happening in, in the Middle East and Europe, but even if you go to the West, although the persecution is different, I mean, many of us right now in the United States are not fearing our lives, but there is persecution of Christians on many fronts. You see this in the culture, you see this in the media, and you definitely, definitely see it in the workplace. Christians are, are attacked for believing in Jesus. You can't even say the name Jesus without having some sort of ramification. And so there's a lot of things that are happening even on the West. What makes me think, is it a matter of time before Christians are physically hurt? Here, well, in they're, the here in the U.S., well, it all progresses, and it doesn't get to the level it's happening across the world without first going, well, I won't bring them up anymore. Well, we just kind of, we'll, we'll just get all of God out of our laws, and just it, it's a gradual progression, and so America's making those progressions right now. Mm -hmm. You know, America's deciding that, you know, we're not going to bring God up because it'll it'll offend somebody in the schools. We're not going to say God, sing God, or right now they're, yeah. the one, one school in Pennsylvania is saying, we're not gonna sing God Bless America because it has God in there and it, it offends someone as so they took that out of school. Others are saying, we don't wanna say the Pledge of Allegiance because it says one nation under God. <laughs> but it's funny, the, mo the money says in God we trust. That's right. <laughs> and they don't have any problem no, taking no problem with handling that. the money. Yeah. And so it, it, does, it happens because those decisions are being made. And so we can see where a lot of those decisions have been made, especially in the administration prior to President Trump. Now, President Trump, by God's grace, is making huge uh, swaths of changes in regards to laws and regards to how we're responding. He's not ashamed to be an American. He's not ashamed to, for Christians to stand up and say well, who their faith is. He just had National Day, to pray, National Day of Prayer in the White House and allowed you know, Christians and Jews to come up and openly pray right there in the oh, Rose yes. Garden. And they talked about Jesus and, and prayed God's blessing and protection over the president and his family and his team and came against the, the sp spiritual enemy, which is Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, that would come against our president. Listen, God will bless a nation whose God, whose God is the Lord. Yeah. And so you think about this, that we can be in that direction and we were headed in that direction. And for some reason, even though they were saying some right things, we were going in a very wrong direction. But how you value life, mm. you know, if we all of a sudden take the life of an innocent person who can't speak, a child in the womb, it won't be long before they start taking life that can speak, you know, the elderly or someone that says, you know, for the collective, you know, this is good to be able to let this people group, you know, suffer for the collective. But we don't mind you talking as long as you come over here in these ghettos, what happened to the Jews in Germany, they let them keep talking, but they actually put them in a lockdown, fenced in area, basically the ghetto. And they went from there, once people forgot about them, and they said they took it from there and started transporting them to a place that they would end their life. Oh, so you powerful know? what you said earlier about how this is a progressive yes. thing that happens. Yes. It makes me think of the proverbial 
frog that didn't jump out of the boiling water. Yeah. As the heat got hotter, he got comfortable. Right. And maybe we're at this point here in America right now. We're, yeah. we're so close. And you have to pay it. So that means you have to pay attention when you're comfortable. You have to pay attention now. And you do that by staying in the Word, staying close, hearing what's going on, seeing what's taking place and realizing if it's some, happening to anybody else anywhere in the world, an injustice anywhere to one person is an injustice to everyone, as Dr. King would say. So we have to pay attention to that. If we don't have compassion on those that are being persecuted now and reach out to defend them, to stand up for them, we'll talk about how you can actually do that prayerfully, but also financially, we're going to have an organization that you'll be able to talk about that, that's doing that very thing. But listen, comment below. What are your thoughts on this? These are huge numbers, the, the, the tragedies that are taking place. What are your thoughts? You know, you start praying, comment and post your prayers below and write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. You know, talk specifically about something maybe you've seen, something that you've heard, something that you feel that can be done, and prayers. We want to hear those specific things. John, what's next? When we get back from this break, we're going to listen to Molly Line as she shares some of these countries where some of these atrocities are actually happening. We're also going to be talking about reportedly uh, uh, an attack that's scheduled during the month of Ramadan against Christians. They're being targeted, but this is a specific threat. Join us, we get right back from this break. We'll be right back. I wanna talk to you about our book. My book is out and it's ready for you right now. I will fight 10 strategies to fight for your success. Listen, so many people in the world understand if you're going to be successful, you got to fight for it. And many people who are believers and Christians think that just success falls out of the sky. But God has created the earth to respond to your labor. He's created the universe to respond to you believing in faith what he's going to do. So I share in this book very specifically about biblically, biblical fights that have happened, but also got 10 uh, specific uh, strategies to be able to help you. I don't care if you're a CEO, I don't care if you're a congressperson or a senator, I don't care if you're a janitor, a business owner, a teacher, a pastor. If anybody knows needs to know how to fight, pastors need to know how to fight for success and, and define you know, what success is. But I talk specifically, and I begin in this book, is about uh, how God spoke to me and why am I writing the book? God showed me specifically in a dream, a prophetic dream, several dreams, but one was that he has a wealth transfer coming and he wants to deliver wealth to his people but they don't have the character and the integrity to be able to, to manage that wealth. He's, he's told, he told me that he's been getting a lot of money and wealth to them, but it goes right through their fingers like holes in a bowl. So they have to learn how to be able to develop strategies, biblical strategies to be able to position, be positioned. Why? Because a great harvest of souls is coming and it's gonna take many, many dollars to be able to bring in that harvest. And it's gonna be God's people who will fund that. And so he's looking for people that are, are willing to say, I want to be positioned. This is all about being positioned for great wealth. And it's not necessarily great wealth and money. It could be great wealth and influence, whatever God has entrusted you with. So get your, it's a free book. You just cover shipping and handling. We want to send it to you for free. And uh, you can go to vfnkb.com for all the details. You can see it on your screen. But listen, it's here. It's right here for you. Wonderful thing. Oh my, how many nuggets? Oh my, maybe... Uh, 500, 600 yeah. <laughs> wisdom nuggets in addition to these success strategies. It's yours now, vfnkb.com. I minister with a group of people that I just absolutely love because all of us, we get tired, we want to quit every week, and we look at each other and go, no, 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 let's, let's go, let's go talk to some more people. I know we were all rejected yesterday. Let's keep going. That's what the body of Christ was supposed to do. We were supposed to gather together to stir one another up to encourage, put courage into each other. And that's what this is about. Man, our, our prayer is that God would do something in our midst that we really could walk away with, with greater courage. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. Persecution of Christians across the earth is coming so, the numbers are so high, so many, that they're even talking about, it's even close to, to the persecution reaching genocidal type levels mm. when you think about it, right? Let's take a look right now. This is Molly Lyon as she's talking specifically about it. A new 
interim report released at the request of the British Foreign Secretary says Christian persecution in some parts of the world is, quote, close to meeting the international definition of genocide, with Christians being targeted by extremist groups in the Middle East, Sub-Saharan Africa, and East Asia. For more on this, we bring in the president of the Iraqi Christian Relief Council and senior fellow of the Philos Project, Juliana Tamarazi. Juliana, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank uh, you for having me on, Molly. Yeah, it, it, it's really startling to see that sort of figure, that takeaway from the report, uh, that it could potentially be reaching genocidal levels. Also worth noting from this report, 80% of religious believers who are being uh, uh, persecuted around the world are Christians. Uh, should this be a, a wake up, a worldwide wake up? Absolutely. There has been a genocide that is already underway uh, and, and perpetrated by ISIS. Uh, as you know, Secretary Kerry uh, announced this as a genocide of the Christians of Iraq and also the Yazidis. But this has been going on for so long. For example, in terms of Iraq, the Assyrians, also the Chaldeans and the Syriacs of Iraq have come under persecution starting 2003 until today. Um, our numbers were 1.5 million today down to 200,000 people. And uh, look at Sri Lanka. Look at what happened there. Look at what's happening in India. Nobody's really talking about India. Uh, so we're grateful for Secretary Hunt and also Ambassador at Large uh, uh, Brownback for really stepping up to do something uh, in a positive way, in a more meaningful way. But there's so much that needs to get done still. Uh, in t worldwide. Uh, according to Open Doors report, one out of nine Christians, Mali, across the world are being persecuted today. It's, it's just a tragedy. Tragedy is taking place. I, you know, you think about the Middle East. The Middle East is the land of the Bible. Mm. I mean, when you talk about the churches that he speaks about in in Book of Revelation, those are those are located in Turkey. When you look at the uh, uh, the the, uh, the Garden of Eden. You're looking at southern Iraq, you know, wow. these different areas and regions. So when, when you read your Bible, it's, it's the land of the Bible mm. when you think about it. And of all the things, some of the, some of the, um, the most oldest uh, Christians lineage in the world, you know, is in Iraq in these different areas. And so you look for millions now down to 200, 200,000, 120,000. 120,000. And, this, and there, it's, the, it's just the enemy coming in, wanting to re trying to remove God off the face of the earth, but it's not going to happen. It's God's earth. It's God's world. But men and kings still conspire against God. I mean, just what he talked about specifically. Of men, right? So when you think about when you think about the definition of genocide, because we hear that word thrown around a lot, mm -hmm. you know, John, read that definition of genocide. It's defined as the systematic and widespread extermination or attempted extermination of a national, national race, religious, or ethnic group. So basically, it's the extermination of Christians on yeah. the face of the earth. And when you see people standing up who, who are more loyal to other nations and other kings and faiths that hate, hate America and mm. hate uh, the God that America stands for, we are one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. One of the founding documents of our country is the Bible. You know, as, as the ambassador to the uh, Israeli ambassador at the UN recently spoke up and held up the Bible, and he said, this is our documentation, right? This, this is, is the title this to is our the land. This is the title to the land of Israel. And it's the most persecuted book, the most burned book, the most uh, destroy, destroy book, but yet the most read book and the most popular book on the face of the earth. And, it, and But in that, when you think about it, look again at this map of the destruction that's taken yeah. place or persecution of Christians all over the world. You look at, Israel, you look at it, Iraq, Egypt. Know, look at Egypt, Syria, Iraq, China, the Philippines, North Korea. North Korea is not on there, but they're a major persecutor. Major, of, number of, one. Of, yes. And and you know, it's just, it's time for us to stand up. Listen, America is the most powerful, uh, largest military, biggest economy, a very large nation. When you think about other nations, you know, Canada, basically the population of Canada could fit into a state inside of the 50 states. Yeah. And you look at, you know, uh, and, we, and we love these countries and the people you're watching right now, they, they compare America to these other countries, and there's only like two, two or three countries that are bigger than America. It's just a huge, it's not only big, but it has a, a blessed economy that's doing really well, has a huge military. You know, the budget on the military is like around $900 billion in one year. 
And that's so that we could be strong enough to defend folks in foreign lands and us from tyranny and things taking place. But we have to speak up yeah. and do something about it. Yeah. It reminds me what, what Martin Niemler was quoted as saying. Uh -huh. He said, first they came for the socialists mm -hmm. and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and then there was no one left to speak for me. And that's so true. How many people were just laying back as this is taking place and it's like the ultimate goal of, of the enemy of mankind is to destroy you because you're made in the image and the likeness of God. When he sees you, he sees the face of God. When he sees how God created you, you remind him of God. He knows he's lost. The end he loses. But the reality is if we don't know that. We just sit back while we're allowing men to be you know, destroyed on the face of the earth for their belief in their faith. I mean, if anybody, this is one man said this. He said, listen, actually Robbie Zacharias said this. He said, okay, you're in the middle of a jungle and you're riding down the road and it's dark and all of a sudden your car breaks down and you're trying to get your car working and it's dark and all of a sudden you hear somebody coming out of the woods. You hear you know, leaves that are crumbling and different, different uh, noises coming out and your, your anxiety gets up. You don't know what's about to happen. This is what Robbie says. Robbie says, now, how, how, would you feel better if the five people coming out of the woods were Christians or not Christians? And the majority of that answers always was if they're Christians, because Christians are not going to harm you. That's right. Christians understand that they need to, they're called to love you, to forgive you, to pray for their enemies, to bless those who curse them and pray, and those that are following the scriptures, you know, those that, 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 that lie on you and misuse you, that we're supposed to be kind to them, somebody hits you, you're not supposed to hit them back. I mean, you want, you know, they're supposed to pray for those in authority over you. The only reason somebody would want to take a Christian out is because they're the enemies of God, or you have a Christian that's not living by biblical principles that's actually working the last nerve of a, of a people group that's going on, that's being hateful yeah. instead of moving in love. And so uh, th there's the only way to think about it. Why would ISIS come down when they're beheading people, they're crucifying people, they're taking people's property and home? Why in the world would they want to, to feel like they could kill Christians, they could take their property, because to them, that they, are, they were the enemy, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and his followers are Satan's direct enemy. That's yeah. the only thing they can In fact, yeah. speaking about that, the Washington Examiner is reporting that ISIS will target Christians in an annual Ramadan offensive. And this is, what, this is what they're predicting. The Islamic State will target Christians as part of the terrorist group's offensive during the up and coming Islamic holy month of Ramadan, this new report predicts. ISIS operatives, of course, they were to credit for the Sri Lanka massacre of mm. the 250 Christians and hundreds of others that were sent to the hospital. But this is something that they have done in times past, in particular in 2014. And so this is something that we definitely want to be alerted to, something that we want to pray. But also this is a time for us to, to awaken ourselves to other organizations and ministries that are actually doing something for the persecuted church. We want to encourage you to go to opendoorsministry.org as they've been working for many years. Opendoors.org or opendoorsministry.org? Opendoors.org. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Opendoors.org. As they've been working to help the persecuted church for many years, they produce an annual report that shows that the top list of countries yes. that have been persecuting Christians. Mm -hmm. and, and North Korea has been for many years number one, but many of the uh, countries in the Middle East have been listed probably near the top ten. And it's hard to really know exactly what North Korea is doing because they, they're the hermit so kingdom. They're closed up. And so if we know this is what they're doing with the closed community, you can imagine, imagine. what they're really doing. Mm. I mean, they have, uh, we had a story on it where they put people in, you know, you can't even stand up. It's a little, you're bent over the whole time you're in this gulag type situation. You're not being fed. You're starving. You're busting big rocks to small rocks. You're, 
if you profess to be a Christian and follow Jesus, then not only you, but like two or three of your generations, your mom, your brother, your uncle, they have to go there as well. Yeah. If you're in jail, you have to come out of a, a almost a doggy door. Yeah. And you're not going to look people in the eye. You've got to come out as an animal. Yeah. It's very horrific how they treat a human and they being. Were, and they were literally having to eat seeds coming from the, the um, dung of an animal to dig that out to be able to eat. This is what's happening right now. And Jesus said this. He said, when I was hungry... You didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me anything to drink. When I was being persecuted, when I was being persecuted, you did nothing. And so they said, Jesus, when did we when did we when did we not when did we see? He says, Whatever you didn't do to the least of these of mine, you didn't do to me. And then others, he says, Listen, when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, when I was being persecuted in prison. You came and visited me. It matters how you respond in the eyes of God to those who are being persecuted. And if you're the one being persecuted, it matters to you. If somebody's praying for you, somebody's, you know, responding to you. And I know we don't have a lot of time, but I remember specifically when we, there was a particular Christian, that as she was pregnant, she was in jail, she was chained and holding her there for the life sentence because she was actually Ibrahim, I think her name Miriam is. Miriam Ibrahim. That, that, that because she was a believer, she wouldn't renounce her faith in Jesus Christ. And so... We began to pray and fast at a time of for the persecuted church, and we watched God during that period of, period of time, a miraculous release. We did a program on it. But it was like as we prayed and fasted, she was about to be released, and they weren't, and we continued to pray and fast. And by the time we finished that prayer and fasting, she was out, she was free, yeah. and she was in America. It matters what you're doing. And what we do, we have a prayer community that we pray every Monday for 24 hours. And you know, we learned that from the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, Missouri, and you just, just pray, begin to pray. Joining, join us in praying for the persecuted church. Go to opendoors.org and support financially. Do something so Jesus can say, when I was hurting, when I was persecuted, you did something for me. Let's pray for them right there. Father God, we just pray for the persecuted church. God, send your angels out, God. End this persecution, God. Shift the global atmosphere, Father God, that would honor your name and honor Jesus and that honor your followers, God. And Lord, break this lukewarm state off of us that's in this in our hearts that we'd be on fire for you, Father God, and that this would not continue to happen, but we would begin to evangelize and tell people about the goodness of God, God. And Lord, we ask you, dear God, in this persecution, in abortion, send revival, send a third great awakening, we pray in Jesus' name. And don't forget how easy it is. Love God, love others, and lead others to do the same. God bless. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe. Listen, together we can touch the world. That's right. Subscribe below, right? Wait, 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 wait. Don't go away. Subscribe. We're going to touch the world. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Hey, be sure to check us out at vfnkb.com and also join the VFNKB community at vfnkbcommunity.com. Listen, your success is our success. Our success is your success. And our success together is kingdom success.